Hey guys, how's it going? It's Tommy and Anthony from Indecisive Prophecy, and today we're doing a review and achievement analysis for the video game Doom. This is a new thing we're doing. We're just testing... Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we're just a new thing we're doing, just testing out the uh, waters, trying new things, seeing where the channel's going, just trying different things. Tell us if you like it. Um, but yeah, we're just going to do a quick review, and at the end we'll talk about achievements, and if you just care about the achievements, you can go to this timestamp on the video or in the description just to note we are not professional game reviewers we're just two dudes in our underpants uh who like to play video games so i'm not in my underpants one dude in underpants and one dude <laughs> fully clothed and another thing is this we're gonna try to make this as spoiler free as possible we will be spoiling a bit of the gameplay this is going to be as spoiler free as possible and let's get into it anthony the first thing I would like to showcase uh, is the gameplay, because as Doom is, it's a very heavy gameplay game. Very uh, heavy. First person shooter. Uh, one of the first, but not this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one, I really do enjoy the gameplay in this game, though. It feels really good. It does. Yeah. Just like, murdering everything in your path. We'll get to that. <laughs> um, the progression system, like lev going through the levels, uh, cause it's level based, like the last Doom was, Doom 2016, and you just go through, I think it's about 11, and- Very similar to Doom 2016, by the way. Yes, it is. And you just collect weapons, just like you did in 2016. You just collect weapons, upgrade, get runes, um, they give you special powers, and as you go through the game, you can upgrade your weapons to make it more powerful. One of my favorites is the assault rifle. It's got the bottomless clip for rocket launchers if you level it up all the way, and it's really mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that the uh, progression with the weapon system is very good because when you start off the game, it's just with one shotgun, and you feel kind of shitty, and it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but then at the end, you have two shotguns, and you feel yes, awesome. Yes, and you feel awesome. Along with all the other death weapons. Yes, like the BFG, <laughs> one of the last weapons. You whoa, get in the game. whoa. I mean, what? That's a spoiler. That's Buttercup. <laughs> is it really? I don't know. I don't think so. It's a BFG. What does that stand for? Biofrequency weapon. Lies. Yeah, it's you not know a what w. it stands for. We all know what it stands for. Mastery tokens, cool addition. For now, you can just spend it on your weapon, so you can do because unlock the like super upgrade for your weapon you have to do like a challenge and you can just use a mastery token they're like at the end of the game yeah they're just a little collectible you could pick up yeah and then they got this new system with the praetor armor uh if i'm saying that right uh, uh, something like that yeah and then it's upgrades that there's collectibles that's most of the upgrades are through collectibles like the weapons and stuff and the praetor is the same you get tokens from these knight dudes and then you just use them to spend on your suit and they upgrade like your equipment, like environment, like movement. Um, they don't. Yeah, and they help you find other collectibles too if you upgrade it. Yeah, the one is the environment one. I think is like it shows you everything on the map. Though I feel like that they're cool additions, but they don't really feel like armor upgrades. They're like upgrade your equipment and stuff, but they don't make you like super overpowered. But you also don't like the equipment in that game, so. Yeah, I barely use the equipment. I There's... always, I always use the frag grenades. I use the flamethrower. They're very useful. Yeah, there's a frag grenade, flamethrower, like you said, and then there's also the ice grenade, and I don't I use... I haven't touched that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't use any It's because they give it to you too late in the game where you're like, I'm already using all these frag grenades anyway, so... Yeah, I feel like that the flamethrower is very, like, I use it when I remember to use it, and then there's the ice bomb, which is very situational. I really only use it when there's, the, like, the pinky dudes that charge you down and stuff the dudes with the giant pinkies <laughs> and shoot you in the back that's what they are yeah <laughs> um the movement for the game is like phenomenal because i feel like i don't know about you but i feel like that's what bethesda tried to target on with this game is to get the movement down and to close very well yeah especially it, with the new dash ability yeah the dash is really cool because then you're just like flying through the game and then it also adds like another element to battles and when you're fighting a bunch of demons and stuff you're dashing around jumping on these like they added like bars that you can like hop on and stuff and they fling you and it's like a very movement based game and it's really cool and it adds a whole new element to doom yeah you got to keep moving to survive in a lot of those fights too yeah it reminds me of sunset overdrive where like if you stop moving you die 
And then in this game, it's very much the same, where if you just stop moving, you'll just get overwhelmed. That's definitely something to compare it to. <laughs> Those are just two totally different games, though. But, but, uh, but I know what you mean. The movement system <laughs> yeah. is very sporadic and crazy and fun. And both games do it well, especially Doom Eternal. Uh, puzzles. Uh, new new thing. edition. Yes. Very, there's, like, tons of puzzles everywhere. All over. Yeah, there's like switches where you gotta like punch a switch, run over to a different switch, punch yeah, that one. Buttons. There's like parkour ones. More buttons. <laughs> more buttons. There's parkour ones. They parkour use... buttons. <laughs> Can you stop with the buttons? <laughs> but it's buttons. And then there's there's parkour challenges where like you jump from like one wall to another wall. One walls fall down when you jump on them. And then you climb up walls like Spider Man too. Yeah, it's very you do a little spider crawl. Like, you just grab onto, like, a wall with your fingers. And Doom doesn't seem like a game you'd do something like that on. Yeah, it's definitely definitely a step back from, like, the Doom craziness. But sometimes you're like, ah, oh, this is kind of a cool thing to make me think for, like, once in the past hour. But then you're also like, just get me back to the gameplay. And sometimes you don't want to think. <laughs> exactly. Like some, It's like a hit or miss thing where you're like, oh, this is cool. Or I just want to shoot stuff. And most of the time, you probably want to shoot stuff. One thing I wanted to bring up that seems to be very divisive is the ammo in the game. It's very scarce, and the only way to get more ammo is picking up off the ground, which is, like, here and there. And also chainsawing enemies, which will pop like pinatas and drop a bunch of ammo and health. <laughs> yeah, you can chainsaw the smaller enemies, like you said, and then the chainsaw recharges on this game, so then you can just, it slowly recharges... And you can just chainsaw, get ammo. And I really like the ammo scarcity because then sometimes you switch to the rocket launcher and then to the energy weapons and stuff like that. And it makes you use weapons that I wouldn't normally use. I know I played through the first game with a gr shotgun grenade launcher and a micro missile assault rifle and I, that's it. Yeah, I'd probably only use like two weapons in the entire game if they didn't do that. Yeah, exactly. But and then also another good thing this game gets is the enemies. That certain ones are like, hey, you don't have to use this weapon, but it's a lot better if you do. Um, there's like a shielded enemy that energy weapons work against uh, better. So then you can pop the shield and then switch to his shotgun to finish him off. So it's a very, they definitely made you more. It make you think a little bit more when you're fighting. Exactly. Thank you, Anthony. My other <laughs> hat. The level design, uh, kind of the only thing of different from Doom 2016 is that it takes place in a city more like that wasn't it really much in the last game the city of hell because he pretty well, much i think the main part is it takes place on earth yeah uh, opposed from mars and hell exactly well, they, there's some hell parts but not as much yeah and some mars parts but not as much yeah <laughs> so yeah they flow really well the only thing that i would say is weird i wouldn't say it's a bad thing about the game is the abruptly ending a mission and getting teleported back to like Definitely. the hub world <laughs> And then you just go to the button, start the next mission, and you go into the next mission. It's really, like, it takes you out of it for a second. Uh, but the hub world, I think, is kind of cool. Where, like, when you get all your collectibles, you could go, like, find them around the hub world. And also, you could play the original Doom 1 and 2. Uh, link in the description how to do that. <laughs> uh, I would prefer if they did it where, instead of kicking you out to the hub world every time, instead, you could have the option to back out. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Because, uh... It's like, oh, you just beat like this big demon boss. All right, let's go back to the spaceship and goof around for a little bit. Uh, all right, let's go to the next mission. Boop, and then you're in the next mission. And there's no like. But some flow. missions they don't send you back to the hub world though. They keep going. Yeah, like the. It's just a handful though. Second to last mission is split up into two missions. Don't know why. Probably can't load as much stuff in one mission. Plus, it would be pretty daunting to have forty collectibles in one mission. <laughs> one mission. <laughs> The replayability, they have these cheat codes that are collectibles throughout the game. You can go back and play through the game again to get cheat codes. And then you can use those cheat codes to play through again with, like, different voices, everything unlocked. Um, I wouldn't say they're, like, super fun cheat codes, like paintballs and heads are big and stuff. But they definitely make it... They make you very powerful, and it's pretty cool. <laughs> and it makes you more fun. It makes it more fun to play through again instead of just playing through again on vanilla. Because they also don't stop your progression. Yeah, so you could get all your collectibles with cheat codes on still and get a bunch of achievements that way. Yeah, exactly. 
So then I think that's about most of it for the campaign. There's some glitches here or there where me and Anthony experienced where some stuff wouldn't spawn in. But that's about it. Yeah, mostly notice those glitches on the easiest mode, which is weird. Yeah, but who knows? That could just be like some overflow error or something. Yeah. One last thing before we get off gameplay. I want to touch on the battle mode, which is the multiplayer mode. I did air quotes. Clearly, you guys can't see that. It's a uh, really fun multi... I wouldn't say really fun. <laughs> you were saying the opposite two seconds ago. I was saying the opposite. It's a mediocre multiplayer mode where, like, they throw you into it. Like, there is a tutorial that we did skip. So that might yeah. be part <laughs> so. of the reason why we didn't know how to play right off the bat. Because um, there's, like, a ton of mechanics with, like, perks that you can use and classes that I don't think you can edit. And like, oh, yeah, no, you can't. You could just choose stuff. Abilities to use with the D-pad. And they I, they probably explain it in the tutorial, but it's very overwhelming just to go into a multiplayer mode. And who and wants to play tutorials, though? Like <laughs> On Doom, of all games. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 2v1. So there's two people who are the demon and one person who is the slayer. And the slayer has to beat the two demons within 20 seconds of each other. So they can get them both down to low health and kill them both. Uh, to get do it tactfully but what really ends up happening is you kill one demon and then the other one's running around for like 20 seconds yeah. <laughs> or the slayers at low health and they're running around for 20 seconds and it just draws out the game it can get really boring depending on who you play and i feel like only after a couple of games it's really interesting yeah it's fun for like the first few games but then afterwards you're just like all right i just want to finish up those achievements <laughs> definitely story for the game uh, there's not much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> you play Doom to rip things apart, not for the story. Yeah, the story, without spoiling much, is pretty much bad guy, kill bad guy, next bad guy, kill bad guy, yeah. and that on and on and on. They got a, they got, they got a little bit of origin stuff for the Doom guy too, but they did. They touched on that special. a little bit. And they also have the lore, like codex pages that you can get to read. But I'm not reading in a Doom <laughs> game. Or a game in general. <laughs> <laughs> How do you read? Uh, but yeah, so it's probably like a super in-depth history on the game and stuff. But it's just, you just want to play the game and shoot and kill stuff. So that's about it for the review portion. So we're going to move on to the achievement portion of the video. Uh, fairly easy, I would say, game to complete. Um, if yeah, because you could play through the entire game on the easiest mode and get all the achievements besides multiplayer. Yeah, so if you're hesitant to buy the game because of achievements and how hard they're going to be it's definitely not that big of a problem i would say 10 to 20 hours if you're really just trying to bust through the game um it took us probably like the whole weekend to complete yeah just about yeah we're missing like two achievements and, they're and just we were like grinds. doing other stuff during that weekend too anyway so exactly and i think the last achievements we need are just grind stuff like there's it's taken us three playthroughs each um, but if you're really determined, you can play through it once because there's a extra life mode, which it gives you three lives at the beginning. And then if you die, you I think you lose. If you save. lose all your lives, I'm pretty sure the game just ends. <laughs> yeah, but there's still, I'm pretty sure, mission replays and stuff. And Is there? I believe I'd, so. But even if I you couldn't don't find any, if you don't do that, you can just then that might not be true. Don't believe that. Um, <laughs> you can just, when you beat the level, you can just teleport anywhere around the level to get anything yeah, you missed. at the end of the level, usually they let you teleport and yeah. get all the collectibles. And even if you don't do everything in one run, I would highly recommend playing through the game, playing through each level, and then at the end going back for collectibles, because it's kind of annoying to play through each mission over again yeah. to get collectibles. So that's what I recommend if you're playing through, so you can cut it down to two playthroughs, um, one for fun, and then getting collectibles, and then the last one for the extra life mode. That's three. <laughs> but that's I meant the two combined at the beginning. You knew what I meant. Um, so yeah, most of them are collectible achievements. You get like 500 gamer score for just playing through the game normally. Um, and then there's a few playthrough collectibles, and then that's about it. And then there's a handful of battle mode achievements, the multiplayer mode that we talked about, and those are literally yep. just grind fests. They just throw up some random numbers up there to get kills and heal and shit. <laughs> yeah, so you're literally just running around. I think me and Anthony did it. You can boost it with three players. We do not have a third friend. Yeah, if you, you could go on a private match and boost, but we did not have one more person. <laughs> exactly. So we and that much, shows you how sad our lives are. <laughs> <laughs> we pretty much just popped down healing stations whenever we could for the healing achievement, the damage achievement. We got no problem. Um, and then for this 
200 kills is probably going to be the worst thing, so you're just going to have to play through game over game over game, and then it kind of wears on you. And yeah, I kind of just stopped paying attention when I was playing and got that last achievement. <laughs> exactly. So that's achievement super easy. Would recommend if you're worried about achievements. Um, would recommend the game in general if you don't care about achievements. Yeah, it's just, a good game. Yeah. So uh, what would you rate it, Anthony, putting you on the spot? Uh, Probably two cheesecakes and a lemon. Two cheesecakes and lemon. You heard it here first, folks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that meaning that I would trade in my two cheesecakes and my lemon for this game. And Anthony really <laughs> loves cheesecakes. <laughs> <laughs> so keep that in no, mind. I mean, it's a very good game for campaign. Uh, I don't know if it has too much replayability. Uh, I'd probably give it like a seven and a half out of ten. If you want to play the game now, definitely go for it. But it's definitely a game you could get on sale and play through on your own time. Thanks for watching our review. Hopefully you found it helpful. And maybe you'll decide if you want to get Doom Eternal or not. And tell us if you like stuff like this because we'll definitely post more if you do. And uh, thanks for watching. Yeah, this is definitely a rough cut. So definitely going to change over time.